Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY and the holidays are coming up and I love making DIY gifts. Um, I think that A, they're fun, sometimes they're affordable, um, but also it's just a unique way to give a gift to somebody, especially for somebody who is hard to shop for, you know, that person who has everything. So for this year, I am making a few DIY gifts and what I'm starting with are these wooden puzzles. So these puzzles were super fun to design and make. I, I cut all of the pieces out on my Thunder laser and then assembled everything using Weldwood Instant Wood Adhesive. So I'm gonna walk you through the entire process and show you how I designed them, cut them, and assembled everything, so stay tuned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you how to design a puzzle and size. You can size these however you want. You can use um, whatever font you want. For this, I felt that using Comic Sans uh, was actually the best font. Um, and so I'm going to just type my name. And I'm going to resize it down because it's a little big. So let's make this three inches. Um, and you can see that I locked this so that way when I change the height to three inches, everything automatically um, scales down in according to that. So. You can see that the letters are kind of skinny um, and I don't want them to be that skinny because it actually makes them pretty fragile. So I'm going to space them out a little bit because what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to offset them. So up here where it says H space, I'm going to space out the letters so that way I can offset them and then I will move them closer together. So I'm gonna go to the offset tool and I'm actually going to stick with this. I'm going to offset them by an eighth inch, which, as you know, means that it's actually a quarter inch all the way around. I have it toggled to delete the original objects. So I'm going to click yes, and you can see that my name is nice and thick, so that way when I cut it out, um, the pieces won't be really fragile and have a tendency to break. So I'm going to highlight the entire name and I'm actually going to elongate it a little bit just because I, I like the taller letters a little bit more. I think actually I'm gonna elongate it to be just an even four inches. Then I'm going to just position the letters. I'm gonna ungroup everything. So I'm gonna hit the little single person right here. I'm gonna ungroup everything and then I'm going to shift the letters Actually, the spacing on these isn't bad, but I'm gonna shift them to be a little bit closer together. I'm gonna shift the E just a bit, and that looks pretty good. So now it's time to create basically the outline of the puzzle, um, the puzzle board. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle, and let me see how big my name is. Let me delete this rectangle. I'm going to group this whole thing together again. And it is 11.6 inches by 4 inches. So I'm going to do this to where it is, there's about an inch of space all the way around. So I'm going to make the rectangle to be 13 and a half inches and the height of the rectangle will be 6 inches. So I'm going to draw my rectangle. I've got the boundary box unlocked so that means when I change the height it will change it um, only the height and not the height and the length. So I'm going to set that to 6 inches. I'm going to set this to 13 and a half inches and then I am going to center my name inside this box. So I'm going to highlight both of them. I'm going to go up to the alignment tools and I'm going to center it both 
uh, side to side and up and down. Okay, so for the puzzle, I don't want to have sharp corners on it. So I'm gonna highlight the rectangle and I'm gonna come over here to the radius tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on every corner and you can see that it gives it just a nice radius so that there's no sharp corners. Okay, so we have the top layer of the puzzle. I'm gonna just copy and paste this to make up the bottom layer and this layer won't be cut out. So this will be cut out but there won't be any letters cut out. These two pieces are gonna be glued together and the letters will be cut out of here and you'll actually have enough space that you won't need to resize your letters to cut them to fit in here um, because of the fact that the laser has a kerf to it. So if you're unfamiliar with kerf, um, some people see it as kind of a four letter word, but what kerf is, is it is the thickness of the laser beam. And the best way to probably describe it would be like a saw blade. Um, when you're using a saw, you can see that the kerf of the saw blade, it's usually about an eighth inch thick. Well, laser beam is the same way. It's gonna have a slight kerf to it, which means that when you cut with the laser, there is going to be, these letters are actually gonna fit a little bit loose in there. It's not gonna be a tight fit where you need to use like a mallet to tap them into place. They're gonna be loose enough that if you were to flip the puzzle over, the pieces will just fall out. So I'm gonna leave these just as they are. I'm gonna cut out the letters and I'm gonna cut them out of the wood and then for the top layer, I'm gonna cut them out of acrylic. So I'm gonna actually copy and paste and these are the letters that will be cut out of acrylic. And my settings for acrylic are actually 16 speed and 28% power. Um, I'm using 130 watt laser. Those settings will obviously be very different depending on the type of laser you're using and what size tube, um, wattage tube you have on your laser. So everything that is going to be cut out of quarter inch Baltic birch I'm actually going to cut it at 23 speed and 85% power. So this file is all ready to go. It's ready to go to the laser. Now, if you'd like to do something different, like different shapes, um, I also made a rainbow puzzle. And what I did was I actually found the design. I have a subscription to a website called Design Bundles. And I found this design on there and I really liked it. I turned it into an SVG file and I made it so that I could cut it out on, out of wood. And I followed the exact same steps to make the name puzzle as I did this. I sized this based off of how big I really wanted it to be. Let's say 12 inches. I'm sorry, it was 12 inches wide, not 12 inches tall. And so sized this and drew the boundary boxes and everything like that. Now for this one, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just engrave or score a line for the designs um, because I tried cutting it out and it actually made these pieces extremely fragile. Um, in fact, this part of the rainbow, because some of these little points you can see get very close to the edge and so pieces were breaking. So what I ended up doing was I used different species of wood and used that as the top layer for the puzzle pieces um, to give it different color. So this is how you create the puzzle. You can do it with any sort of shape you want. You can hand draw shapes. Um, you know, you can do just different lines, all sorts of things. Um, to make the puzzle pieces. That's obviously a really poor illustration, but you get the gist of it. So I am going to now show you how to cut all of these out on the laser and assemble it. To get started on this project, I grabbed some quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and my sander. I sanded the entire sheet down on both sides with 220 grit sandpaper. Over at my laser, I placed the sheet on the honeycomb bed. It was a little warped, so I clamped it down flat. 
I set the focus and made sure to frame the area I'd be cutting and then sent the job to the laser. Once the wood was cut out, I grabbed some various colored sheets of acrylic that I had on hand. You can see for this first cut that I didn't have my air settings correct and the air was too low and it caused a flame up. Fortunately, I'm able to quickly adjust the air pressure on, on the knobs on my Thunder Laser, so I fixed the issue really quickly. I kept cutting the remaining letters, then took everything to my workbench for assembly. I glued the top and bottom pieces of the puzzle board together using DAP Weldwood Instant Wood Adhesive. I use this glue on so many projects. It's incredibly strong and it sets quickly. It's fully cured within 30 minutes, which means that there's very little downtime in between steps. When I glued the puzzle board together, I glued the pieces so the warped curve was opposite of each other, and my intent with this was that it would sort of work itself out and become straight. So I used some little clamps that I had on hand to hold everything together while the glue cured and I set it aside. With the glue cured, I took off all of the clamps and sandled the sanded the puzzle board down with 220 and 400 grit sandpaper to get it extra smooth. I then got to work gluing the acrylic to the wooden letters. You can most certainly use two layers of wood to help it stand out and then paint the letters. But painting these letters sounded like a task that I was not gonna like, and the acrylic works just as well for this. When adding glue to the letters, you wanna be careful to add just enough for everything to stick together, but not enough to allow squeeze out, which will ultimately just cause a big mess. I would also not recommend placing the puzzle pieces into the board right after gluing them, just in case you do have a small bit of squeeze out. You don't want your pieces to accidentally get glued into the board or you'll essentially just end up creating a really complicated sign. The DAP Weldwood Instant Wood Adhesive set so quickly that these puzzle pieces were ready to be set in place within just a few minutes. Back at my laser, I started cutting out the pieces for the second puzzle. I cut the puzzle board, and then I started cutting out the individual rainbow pieces. These were all again cut out of quarter inch Baltic birch. For the second layer of the puzzle pieces, I used various species of veneer plywood. For the plywood pieces, I used walnut, oak, mahogany, and cherry. You can see that I scored the lines for the designs in the puzzle pieces rather than cutting through them because of how delicate and fragile it would make the pieces and I didn't want them breaking. But I really liked the design on the pieces because I think it added a lot of interest. When all of the pieces were cut, I took them back to my workbench and glued everything together. Like I said before, the DAP Weldwood Instant Adhesive is so quick that I was able to put this puzzle together in no time. I lightly sanded all of the pieces, and then I assembled the puzzle board. I finished the rainbow puzzle board in pieces with pure tongue oil, which really brought out the beauty of the different woods. If I were to do it over again, however, I think that I might skip adding the tongue oil to the puzzle board, but it's totally up to you as to how you'd like to finish everything. I love how simple and beautiful these puzzles are, and I can't wait to give them as a gift at Christmas this year. I hope you enjoyed watching this video today. If you have any questions at all about how I designed or assembled these puzzles or how I finished them, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Oh.
Oh, oh, oh.